Monkey D. Luffy is a protagonist who begins his journey as someone with somewhat of an unremarkable devil fruit. Having the power to stretch himself, although interesting, shouldn't be on the same level as using fire, magma, ice, light, or an operating room where the user is a god. However, Luffy proves himself to be a cut above the rest as he uses his rubber anatomy to toy with his metabolism, temporarily increasing his powers to great extents as he creates the gears. And he finally reaches his peak, which not only introduces us to Luffy's anatomy being far stranger than we could have ever imagined, but it also comes with one of the craziest lore drops and plot twists of the entire story. However, Luffy's body and powers have already worked ridiculously, and that's what we're going to dive into in this video. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. What exactly are Luffy's gears? Gears are temporary power-ups and transformations that Luffy can achieve by manipulating his rubber body. These techniques can be very draining for the user, but they act as a huge boost to Luffy's power during usage. For the longest time, we were made to think that Luffy has the gum gum paramecia type fruit. However, the Wano Country Saga revealed that his fruit was actually called the human human fruit, mythical zone type, model sun god Nika. Luffy's fruit was always foreshadowed to be a zone type since it's not normal for Logias or Paramecia users to have transformation levels or different forms. The other significant character who shows off something similar is Chopper with his monster points, who also has a zone type fruit. Even Kaido has several forms, such as his beast form and the man beast form. Devil fruits can be awakened, which allows the user to change not just their body, but also their surroundings to imitate the properties of their fruit. However, Luffy did not awaken his fruit up until his final battle against Kaido. To compensate for an unawakened fruit, Luffy created created gears, which are a form of forced awakening. For example, Luffy, in his awakened Gear 5 state, has a white smoke scarf hanging around him. He has a similar black smoke scarf around him when in Gear 4, proving that he is trying to force himself into a state of awakening. Each gear has different properties, which we'll discuss in today's video. However, gears can be very strenuous for the body and take away from Luffy's life force. Gear 1, aka Luffy Base Form. Luffy's base form is whatever he anatomically acquired immediately after consuming his devil fruit. His body exhibits properties of both gum and rubber, as it is malleable as well as elastic. Had his body just been rubber, he would not have been able to stretch or manipulate his body to the extent that he does. Had it been just gum, he would have been able to extend his body by a great margin, but it would have been less likely to retract. Luffy is very strong in his base form, which was proven during the Water 7 arc when Luffy was able to move two buildings with brute strength alone. As a gum human, however, his powers rely on quite a bit of physics, as he can stretch his arm back to gather potential energy and then shoot it towards his opponent with great levels of force. His body also makes him immune to bullets, as seen from the second episode where he recruits Zoro and takes bullets meant for his first mate, using his body to ricochet them back at Helmeppo and Co. He can also bounce back blunt projectiles and even cannonballs. He is also resistant to lightning, since rubber does not conduct electricity. This is a huge advantage during the Skypea arc because it would have been impossible for Luffy to defeat Inel, who had an awakened lightning devil fruit alongside an incredible observation hockey. Most importantly, physical hits do not hurt Luffy even in base form due to rubber's resistant properties. One would require armament hockey to be able to hurt Luffy, which is why he was so surprised by his injuries in Amazon Lily, which was an island of female warriors where everyone was a hockey user. Luffy is also vulnerable to slashing techniques. Not only can Luffy stretch his body to great lengths, but he can also inflate himself. Luffy keeps eating until his body has completely swollen up, but his metabolism is fast enough for him to decompress after a while. This ability to inflate allows him to win against the Sand Logia user Crocodile in Arabasta and Cracker in Whole Cake Island. Since Crocodile was a warlord, Luffy had a very hard time against him, until he was able to figure out that water was Crocodile's weakness since it prevented his sand from moving freely. To counter the warlord, Luffy drank absurd amounts of water, carrying more on his back, and bounced around to fight and win against Crocodile. Fighting against Cracker, Luffy was having a very difficult time despite using several power-ups. However, Nami assisted him by using her climb attack to cause rain, softening the crackers or biscuits that made up their opponent. Ultimately, Luffy was able to win after he began to consume the crackers on his opponent's body. Luffy's range due to his stretch allows him to extend every individual body part in combat. He can stretch his arm and drag it to sweep several opponents at once. He often uses a Gatling attack where he showers his opponents with punches and even kicks. His most commonly used attack would be the 
the Gum Gum No Pistol, where he stretches an arm back and brings it from a distance to hit an enemy. He can use the Gum Gum No Rocket to grab an obstacle, pull himself back, and propel himself forward to travel long distances in one go. Other iconic base form attacks are the Gum Gum Bazooka, which requires the usage of both hands at once. Luffy can also constrict his enemy by wrapping his body around them. Dress Rosa introduced a very unique ability where Luffy twisted his torso to use the Gum Gum UFO. It took him a long time to be as proficient as he is because he struggled against Ace as a child, even when he had a devil fruit and Ace did not. Training in the forest due to Garp allowed him to become strong. Other than that, Luffy's childlike nature allows him to be very creative. Gear 2, aka Red Hawk Luffy. During the Water 7 arc, Luffy is very easily outclassed by the CP9 members, especially Rob Lucci. After he breaks into Eni's lobby to save Robin, at some point, he comes across the CP9 member Bluno, who has the Door Door fruit and a very resilient body. At first, it feels like Luffy is toast because previously he had lost to the tricks of the CP9 members. However, he whips out Gear 2 by using his rubber calves to pump blood faster throughout his body, thus increasing his metabolism. Because his entire body is rubber, he can withstand the newly created blood pressure from more oxygen and nutrients being distributed throughout his body. His body turns reddish and it emits steam after he activates Gear 2. In this form, Luffy's strength and speed increase immensely, allowing him to land blows against CP9 members. The names of his attacks also change, with him adding a jet before the named attack. For example, Gum Gum Pistol becomes Gum Gum No Jet Pistol. It is not known when Luffy acquired this gear, but then One Piece isn't a stereotypical battle shown in with training arcs. It's an adventure series with mystery and its plot as its strongest suit so often. We're not shown things we'd see in a typical shonen arc, such as a long, drawn-out training arc for the protagonist. In Gear 2, Luffy acquires enough strength to smash through the defensive Takai powers from the Six Powers, which allows the human user to have superhuman defense. We see this when he uses the Gum Gum No Jet Bazooka against Bluno, which allows him to land a hit on the CP9 member. The form also allows Luffy to fight against those with superhuman speed. He can speed blitz to a certain extent as well, of course, not against characters such as is Kizaru, who is light speed, but against standard fast opponents. One of the coolest moves acquired as a result of Gear 2 is the Red Hawk. It didn't exist pre-time skip as the feat requires hockey, allowing Luffy to acquire unnatural levels of speed and force as he brings in his punch. His body heats up due to Gear 2 increasing his metabolism and his hockey working together, increasing his force and friction against the air. His fist lights itself on fire, allowing Luffy to land a blazing punch on his opponent. The attack mimics Ace and Sabo's fire fist. We see it for the first time in the Fisherman Island arc. Normally, the gears threaten Luffy's lifespan and exhaust him to a greater extent. Following his training with Rayleigh during the time skip, however, Luffy gained better control over his form making him capable of selectively activating Gear 2 across separate body parts. It seems like the threat to his lifespan and stamina from using his gears has reduced following his training with Dark King Rayleigh during the time skip. Gear 3, the form that turned Luffy into a baby. We see Luffy surprise us with another gear in Eni's lobby as he blows a huge amount of air into his thumb. This allows him to inflate that part of his body and gives him a gigantic fist to punch his opponents with. The damage caused by a gear 3 punch is also far higher than the damage caused by a gear 2 punch as seen from how Luffy was able to throw the previously invincible Rob Lucci far away with his inflated punch. It can also destroy huge buildings, and the first time it was used, it destroyed a steel door. Initially, Gear 3 had a lot of drawbacks due to the gigantification of a limb remaining unsupported by the smaller, human-sized torso. The greater strength was also countered by lower levels of mobility, making it hard for Luffy to move around like he can in Gear 2. This makes Gear 3 a liability when fighting opponents that move around at high speeds. For example, Rob Lucci, who Luffy fought during Eni's Lobby's final showdown versus the CP9 members, is a combatant who possesses incredible speed. Luffy did use Gear 3 against him, but it was, for the longest part, not the most advantageous, following which Luffy refrained from using this gear against fast opponents. In a way, Gear 3 is like a balloon since Luffy inflates himself. Once he's done using the gear or doesn't have the stamina to continue using it, he blows the air out, deflating his body. The energy required for this partial gigantification results in another major drawback, as Luffy turns into a kid after using Gear 3. In this form, Luffy can't use his normal rubber attacks, and his only option is to run and 
hide. The baby form remains for approximately as long as the time Luffy spent in Gear 3. We see this not just in Eni's lobby, but also in Impel Down and Seb Bowdy. After training with Rayleigh, Luffy successfully manages to counter all the drawbacks of Gear 3 and make his attacks stronger by coating his gigantified limb with armament hockey. He learned how to control where the air would be stored within his body. He could stretch himself in this form, distributing the air across his body and inflating his torso to support his partial gigantification. He also ceased to experience shrinkage and his transformation into a kid at this time. With hockey coating and free manipulation of the gigantification, Luffy learned to use Gear 3 not just offensively, but also defensively, as seen in Dress Rosa, where he was able to block Admiral Fujitora's slashing attacks. And Luffy is normally vulnerable to being cut, so this worked as a great counter. Similar to the Gear 2 attacks, Gear 3 also came with Luffy altering the names of his attacks by adding a Gigante before it. This led to attacks such as Gum Gum No Gigante Stamp or Gum Gum No Gigante Rifle. It's just like base Luffy's attacks, but a giant version. Once he starts coding his attacks with Armament Hockey, he swaps out Gigante for Elephant, giving us attacks such as the Gum Gum No Elephant Gun or Elephant Rifle. However, the most iconic attack born to Gear 3 would be Gum Gum No Red Rock, which combines the hockey coated Elephant Gun with Gear 2's Red Hawk. This allows Luffy to launch a super powerful hardened punch, which is also inflamed. It was able to knock down Kaido during the battle at Onigashima. Gear 4 The most versatile gear in Luffy's arsenal. In Dress Rosa, Luffy debuts Gear 4 while fighting Doflamingo. He coats his arm with armament hockey and blows air into it. This inflates his entire body and covers all of his limbs and part of his chest with armament hockey. This gear gives him an exaggerated appearance with the area around his eyes getting darker. The size of his torso is a lot bigger and so are his arms. He can freely manipulate the rubber of his arms to increase the AP of his attacks. The gear manifests into three forms, namely Bound Man, Tank Man, and Snake Man. Each form specializes in different things with Bound Man increasing his offense, Tank Man increasing his defense, and Snake Man increasing his speed. So let's go over all three forms individually. Starting with Bound Man, Luffy cannot stand still while in the form and continues to bounce on his feet at all times. This is the first form we see, and it was originally created for Luffy to fight the large animals in Rusukena, the island close to Amazon Lily, where he trained with Rayleigh. In Bound Man, Luffy can propel himself forward by kicking off the water, similar to how the six powers are used or how Sanji is able to walk on the sky. It also makes Luffy more resistant to external attacks due to the spread of his hockey as well as his enhanced strength. However, Luffy's warped anatomy in this form makes it hard for him to control his landing after attacks, since he cannot fight while sticking to the ground due to his bounce. The high usage of armament hockey also makes him resistant to cutting attacks, unless a blade user fighting him has equal or better armament hockey than he does. This also means that a blunt attack from a far stronger opponent can outclass Gear 4 Luffy, as seen when Kaido's Thunder Bagua led to him being flung far away and eventually captured. In this form, Luffy's most iconic attacks are Gum Gum No Kong Gun and Gum Gum No King Kong Gun. Both are overpowered short-range punches, with King Kong Gun being a combination of Gear 4 and Gear 3, since Luffy blows into his arm to inflate the size of his Kong Gun. Both attacks were used to knock out Doflamingo. Next up, we have Tank Man, who was introduced in Whole Cake Island during Luffy's fight against Charlotte Cracker. During this fight, Luffy's entire body had inflated due to him consuming Cracker's biscuit-based attacks after Nami softened it with rain. A good portion of his torso was also coated with armament hockey. This form is great for enhancing Luffy's durability and can bounce off attacks, as seen from Luffy trapping his opponent in his stomach and launching Cracker into the air. However, we don't know if he can attain this form without overeating. With Gears increasing Luffy's metabolism, he's able to come out of his overweight form a few minutes after overeating since his body burns so many calories. And finally, we have Snake Man, a speed-oriented form that was employed by Luffy against Katakuri since the sweep commander's observation hockey was so good that he could see five seconds into the future. Snake Man increases Luffy's attack speed by a huge margin and allows him to move in different directions while on air like in Bound Man. However, the difference lies in Snake Man allowing Luffy to have increased speed. Snake Man also allows his body to constantly accelerate up until Luffy lands the hits. This move is known as Python, and it was able to overcome Katakuri's future sight for a while because while Katakuri could see into the future, he did not have the time to avoid the attack. In the form, Luffy's body does not inflate disproportionately and he maintains his fitter body. His armament hockey is also limited to his limbs and does not extend to his shoulders or torso. Due to the lack of inflation, Snake Man's defense is lower than that of Bound Man's and Tank Man's. Gear 4 is Luffy's most Forced Awakening, as seen from the cloud of smoke that surrounds him in this form. This cloud is seen among all awakened Zoan types such as Yamato, Kaido, and Rob Lucci in Egghead. 
because it also requires a lot of hockey. When Luffy cannot pull his Gear 4 forms anymore, he loses the ability to use hockey for the next 10 minutes. Gear 4 is also used to foreshadow the unnatural nature of Luffy's fruit, apart from the zone smoke cloud. For example, both Doflamingo and Katakuri comment on how what Luffy is doing should not be possible with rubber powers when Luffy attacks them by jetting his body into different directions. And yet, his body is so elastic in this form, especially Bound Man, that he continues bouncing with a slight touch of the ground. All in all, Gear 4 is Luffy's most versatile form up until his awakening. Gear 5 – Luffy's True Awakened State Gear 5 is not just a gear, but it's Luffy's Devil Fruit Awakened. After being killed by Kaido, the fruit awakens with the beat of his heart changing. His heart starts to beat in the rhythm of the drums of liberation, and Luffy's body gets bleached while the semicircular smoke cloud manifests perfectly around him. The awakening also causes Luffy's surroundings and anything Luffy touches to turn into rubber, making the battlefield Luffy's personal trampoline. This is where we learn about his fruit being the human-human fruit, the mythical zone with sun god Nika as its model. Nika was a sun god and the warrior of liberation, who used to be worshipped by slaves as they wished for Nika to free them. His body was said to possess the properties of rubber, which is why Luffy has a rubber body. The same abilities were possessed by Joy Boy, who had the same fruit as Luffy 800 years ago. In this form, the user is constantly seen laughing and being full of joy because they are completely liberated and free. When Luffy was asked about his altered appearance in Gear 5, he went on to mention that was how he looked when he was completely free. It is also known to be the most ridiculous power in the world, as seen from how Luffy fights like a cartoon character, his eyes popping out of his sockets, that too not as a Gag. His appearance changes to mimic the motions of a cartoon character, and he very clearly seems to possess the Toon Force, which is the ability to use cartoon physics. He has a lot of incredible feats in this form, so let's go over the craziest ones. When Luffy was hit by Kaido's Kanabo prior to his awakening, he was knocked far, far away. When he gets hit by the Kanabo in Gear 5, Luffy's body just stretches back from impact. Not only can he turn the ground into rubber, but he can also turn his opponent's body into rubber after coming into contact with it. His attacks caused Kaido to see stars, similar to how cartoon characters have a halo of stars over them when they're hurt. Luffy can also enlarge his body to the point that he can grow bigger than Big Mom. In Gear 5, Luffy has even used Kaido as a skip rope while the latter was in his dragon form, his awakened stage allowing him to turn anything into rubber, and his rubber body not conducting lightning allowed him to grab a lightning bolt and launch it at Kaido. He could also alter the course of the bolt and stretch it, as seen when he used it to beat down Kaido. Towards the end of Wano, Luffy recreates the King Kong gun but on a whole different scale as he blows up his fist to be the size of Onigashima. His attack is also imbued with advanced armament hockey and amped by advanced conqueror's hockey. This attack is known as the Badrang Gun and it was the final move that led to Kaido's loss. In Egghead, Luffy is seen tapping into Gear 5 of his own accord and unlike the other transformations, Luffy does not have to blow into his body or physically manipulate it to gear up. He can focus on his heartbeat to play the drums of liberation and once that happens and he can hear it, Luffy enters his awakened state. His strength and speed are on a completely different level, especially due to Luffy's hockey magnifying its potency. His Toon Force also becomes more evident in Egghead, as he can do just about anything. He smashes Saturn and Kizaru into each other with his Gum Gum No Dawn symbol attack as he claps his hands with the two opponents in the middle. This results in them getting flattened like a cartoon character. He also showed off the ability to chew off a tree as he turned it into a baseball bat. He then procured black paint out of nowhere and painted the tree to make it resemble a baseball bat. After the Gorosei arrives, Top Man War Curry's Conqueror's Roar also leads to his facial features and scars being dislocated from his body. However, Luffy is able to grab everything, which is when we see that scar on his chest and under his eye had almost been blown off as well. He's seen using the term Dawn, or Booming Dawn, for his Gear 5 attacks due to lore and imagery. Joy Boy and Nika have always been associated with the Dawn, since the Sun God freed the people as Dawn came. The first One Piece arc that introduces Luffy is also known as the Romance Dawn arc. All in all, Gear 5 shows off some ridiculous cartoon physics after making Luffy's body uncharacteristically malleable. This is because the true power in his fruit is bringing anything he imagines to reality, which ties itself to the nature of devil fruits, since they exist as a result of human desires. The drawback of Gear 5 is how draining it is to the body, and how it may take away from Luffy's lifespan. Whenever the duration comes to a close, Luffy decompresses and ages rapidly to become an old man, albeit temporarily. In short, Luffy can do absolutely anything he wants to while in Gear 5. This power up has increased his strength to ridiculous levels, so much so that it makes sense for him to be a Yonko and the next King of the Pirates. 
Can Luffy combine his gears? Luffy has combined his gears before, such as Elephant Gun being a combination of Gear 2 and Gear 3, and King Kong Gun combining Gear 4 with Gear 3. However, he doesn't need to combine his gears anymore now that he has Gear 5, which can do just about anything he wants. However, it is possible that Luffy might get another power-up, since One Piece is likely to head to the final war suit. There is a theory that this power-up might be a gear reverse, with each gear in Luffy's forms representing one of the car gears. Since the fifth gear accelerates a car the most, Gear 5 is Luffy's peak. However, Gear Reverse can be something completely different and may even be an advantage in Luffy's probable fight against Blackbeard, whose Devil Fruit can nullify fruit power. Marvelous Verdict Luffy is not only creative and versatile, he's also one of the most unique protagonists across Shonen. He has way too many tricks up his sleeve despite being a dummy, and his peak power is just him being an unhinged cartoon character who's going to bring the dawn to the world. The presence of his gears also shows how Luffy is pushing towards freedom as he forces an awakening and finally finds it after he is nearly killed. With that, today's video comes to an end. What do you think of Luffy's gears? Do you think gear reverse is a possibility? Share your thoughts with us in the comments down below, and until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.